All right, so we're going to look at uh, two other ways to prove triangles congruent today, ASA and AAS. So there are only four methods, SSS, SAS, AAS, and A ASA. The only one that doesn't work is SSA, which is that bad word spelled backwards. That's the only one, the only combination that doesn't work. So this would be an included side. Notice how the side is in between the two angles. This would be the non-included side because it's not in between the two angles. Both of these have two angles and a side. This is included, non-included. So, <laughs> this is a typical question. Cross out the figures that are not triangles. Hmm. Let me think about that one. Uh, that one. Well, welcome, Ian. So nice. Did you bring us a treat? Oh a, tr oh, a pass is my treat? No, Look what Brenna brought me. Yeah, oh my goodness. It really was Brenna's mother. Uh -huh. I can't try yet, so. <laughs> my mother, her mother drove her. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to carry it. All right, these are the non-triangles. I realized that that was a shocker. So, are we all ready? Did we not all get our notes? Did we get past that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just passed it. Right I passed it over. Yeah. Oh, oh, is that for no. Ian? That, those are Ian's. Can we give those to Ian? Oh, is that the wrong one? Oh, I'm sorry. I grabbed the wrong one. So this is what happens. There, take that. This is what happens when you interrupt my lesson. All right, here we go. Focus back up here. All right. A triangle is a polygon with three sides. A triangle with a right angle is called a, wait for it, thank you, right triangle. Corresponding, we already know what that means, don't we? Yeah. Corresponding means in a similar position, purpose, or form. So I want you to draw a line to all the corresponding parts of the two triangles. Now the triangles are not oriented correctly. So use the, bless you, use the tick marks, bless you again, use the tick marks to determine uh, the angles that are corresponding. So for instance, uh, angle A is in between the side that is single and double tick marked. So the side over here that is single and double tick marked are those two, and the included angle in between that is X. So I know that A and X must correspond, so angle A corresponds to angle X. So that's how I would find your angles. The sides are quite easy because of the tick marks. So continue to do the rest. So there are your answers. Tatum, we missed you. We were wondering where you were. We didn't know how we could start class without you. See, she brought something. Yeah, she brought treats. Look, at she brought, oh, well, then that's not for you. That's for none of you. That was not the right time. <laughs> All right, are we okay with the six corresponding parts? Now, 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 hey, 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 we're not passing out candy in here. Absolutely, no, absolutely not. Is it a take five? Is it a take five? Oh, I'll take a Kit Kat. <laughs> See, the blind woman catches. Now you, oh, look, it has hearts. Is it that old that it's from Valentine's Day? Okay. Oh, Ew. maybe it's just not early. Yeah, it's still chocolate. It's still chocolate. Okay. All right, so let's look at one of our new postulates, angle, side, angle. You can only use angle, side, angle when the side is included. And notice, 
notice in this picture, we've got two sets of corresponding congruent angles, and this is the side that is included. An included side is bordered on the left and the right side by the angles. So if you were to put your finger at where the angles were, the included side should be in between your fingertips. The difference between ASA and SAS is ASA has an included side. This has an included side. Where, bless you, bless you SAS has an included angle. Just another way that we can do a proof. So which two triangles, problem one, are congruent by ASA? So look at this triangle. ASA means it has included side. So, we, and two angles on a side. We have two angles on a side. Is that side in between the two angles? Here's my two angles. That side is in between. So this is SAX. Here's my two angles here. Is that side in between? Nope. nope. Here's my two angles here. Is that side in between? In between my angles? Sure it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, so that means that this triangle here and this triangle here are congruent by ASA. Not this one. This one is AAS. Angle, angle, side. Now, they want you to name the triangle, so I want you to write a triangle congruence statement. We can just go all the way down here and write our triangle congruence statement. Just based upon the arc marks, you can write your triangle congruence statement. So start with your single arc mark, triangle G. What corresponds to G on the other triangle? On the other triangle here? C. Yes. Yep. And then, then we have H as our next arc mark. What corresponds to H over here? A. And then that leaves us with O, and that leaves us with T here. Go cat. Oh, that would be like the U of A thing. Uh -uh. Well, as much as I dislike Oregon, I dislike U of A almost as much, so that does make me happy. <laughs> there are some some state some universities I do dislike more. Okay, so here we're going to start writing a proof using ASA. This happens to be a flow through proof, which I'll, I won't usually make you do. But let's go ahead and look at it. Let's do some pre proof planning first. So they have given us that angle CAB is congruent to DAE. This is an angle, and if they hadn't marked it, we would mark it. Then they said that side BA is congruent to side EA. So BA and EA, those are tick marks, that's a side. So we could do SAS or S or um, AAS at this point. Or SSA, can we do SSA? Nope, that would spell backwards. Angle B and angle E are right angles. Those are gonna eventually give us an A. This is, not a tri this is not an angle congruent statement, so we'd eventually have to get to the angle congruent statement, but what do you know about all right angles? They're all congruent. So we can go immediately from here and conclude that angle B is congruent to angle E because all right angles are congruent. So I've got two angles on a side. It's either ASA or AAS. We have to determine is this side included in between the two angles or not? Yes or no? Yes. So we are going to prove the triangle is congruent by ASA because the side's included. If the side they had given you was over here, CA and uh, DA, and they had to mark that, then it would have been AAS. So pay attention whether you have an included side or not included side. So let's go through this. So given angle B and angle E, are right angles, so that's the given, that's the reason. From here we conclude 
that all right angles are congruent. So angle B is congruent to angle E. Now note that I would not have, well, I guess I could have started through here. This gives us our first A. Then the next thing is they're uh, putting in the other given, which is the side length. VA is congruent to EA, side BA, and that gives us our S. That's a direct congruent statement. So AS, the only thing we're left we need is A, and so that's another given. So angle CAB is congruent to angle DAB, and that's a congruent statement, so that's A. So ASA, check it off. I hit my third piece. I can now prove the triangle is congruent by that ASA postulate. And so triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ABD. We have to write it exactly as it states. So the proof shouldn't be too much longer than that. And if we were doing this, this would have been statement one. We're doing it in a two column proof. This would have been statement two. This would have been statement three. This would have been statement four. And this finally would be statement five. Then we come to our second theorem of the day. AAS, angle angle side, which implies that there is a non-included side. So we have a non-included congruent side. And the other one was a included side on that one. So let's write a proof using AAS. See how they're different. So you're given that angle S is congruent to angle Q. That's a direct congruent statement for an angle. So there's an A and they've arc marked those angles. Then they said that segment RP bisects the angle SRQ. SRQ. This angle right here. What do we know about a segment bisector, what does it give us? Or an angle bisector, sorry. It gives us congruent angles, right? So if, if RP is bisecting this whole angle, won't it make this angle here and this angle here congruent? So my conclusion from that given is that angle SRP is congruent to angle QRP. Why? We're just going to abbreviate definition of angle bisector, but we'll write it out. An angle bisector creates two congruent angles. That's what you're going to end up writing out. So that's going to give us another angle. We've got AA. That's all that's in the given. What else can we prove looking at the picture that we don't need any help? We need other side when we need a side because we don't have AAA. And in fact, AAA does not prove triangles congruent because think of an equilateral triangle. An equilateral triangle has all interior angles 60, 60, 60, but are there different sizes of equilateral triangles? Yep. So um, all congruent interior angles does not create a congruent triangle. It could, but not necessarily. So what can I prove that in help? PR is congruent to PR. This has been a very common recurring thing, right? And, what's, and this is an S statement. So I'm going to tick mark that and one. We'll write it out more later. So I've got AAS or ASA. Is this side included in between the two angles? So the fingers there, is that side in between? No. So it has to be AAS, and that's going to be the progression that my proof should follow. Now they've started the proof and done the proof for you. I can't guarantee that they're going to follow it that way, so let's see. So let's go down here. They've started with angle S, it's congruent to. Angle Q, they got that from the given. That's a direct angle congruent statement. Then they've gone to RP bisects angle SRQ. I got that from the given statement also up here. 
that's not a congruent statement, so I can't put anything next to that. Then SRP is congruent, and that's what we concluded from here in our pre proof planning, was that that angle is congruent to angle Q, RP. That is a direct angle congruent statement, so they are going in the order of AAS, which is nice. And the reason for that, you're not allowed to put definition of angle bisector. You have to write an angle bisector creates two congruent angles. So then, finally we've got, they have RP, we did PR, so because they have RP, we're going to do RP as well. That's a side congruency. And reflective property of congruent segments, we can add that on there. And then finally, we've hit all three pieces, we can write our triangle congruency statement. Um, so write it exactly as it's written in the proof. QRP, don't forget your triangle, Y-A-A-S postulate. These are going to be the easiest proofs all year long, mostly because you have a direction you know where to go. You have a path in mind. Okay. Are triangle PAR and triangle SIR congruent? And explain. So look at the congruence markers that they've given you. They've given you that angle A is congruent to what? Angle I. And segment PR is congruent to segment what? RS. What other corresponding congruent parts exist that you can determine without any help? Do you see your vertical angles right there? Another common recurring theme. So angle PRA is congruent to angle IRS because Vertical angles are congruent. So we have two angles and a side. Is that side included in between the two angles? Yes or no? That tick mark side is not in between my fingers, is it? Nope. So uh, is that AAS or ASA? AAS. So yes. Triangle PAR is congruent to triangle SIR by AAS postulate. Question. And then the last part I want you to do on your own. So answers question 24 through 28.
So compare your answers with those around you. Well, they say suppose that angle E is congruent to angle I, and notice how they have the arc marks there. So, and notice that on their triangles they have the F, D, E, so E has to go with F, so E has to be over here. Does that make sense? Just scribble it out. <laughs> so the hard part comes initially on how do you label the triangles. So they said that suppose that angle E is congruent to angle I. Well, for me, I can hardly even see those angle markers, but there's the congruent angle markers. And um, to figure out whether this is I or E, they said here, prove that triangle FDE, well, E has to go with that. So that means that E is going to be right there, and then I must be up with that one. And then they said that FE and GI are congruent, so that means FE must be here. And uh, if that's I, then G must be over here. That leaves only one spot left over for the others. So it's important to get those triangles identified correctly. And they could have um, not giving you a picture at all and giving you the same information, and you could have still done that just with the information that they gave you. So there's those. Uh, here they wanted to actually write out we need an angle, you know, an additional angle, an additional angle. Um, and these are the angles that they wanted. So grab your workbook. You're going to turn to 4 3 practice. So turn to 4 3 practice. Uh, page 99. Yep. Thank you, Brody. All right. Everybody turn to page 99. Turn to page 99. So I want you to answer number one and number two. Name two triangles that are congruent by ASA. So just circle the ones that are ASA. several sides, um, but the two, the two angles that are bordering the included side are the single and the double tick mark, and here's a single arc mark, and here's a single and double arc mark. So these are the two, not that one. 
What about number two? Yeah, they all have ASA, right? Every single one of these are ASA. They all have a included side, but this one's in between the right angle and a single arc mark. This one's in between a double arc mark and the right angle, so they are not the same <coughs> ASAs. This one's between the um, right angle and the single, so it's got to be this one and this one. Then we're going to do some pre-proof planning. So let's look at the picture. You're not going to do a proof, you're just going to plan. So I want you to look at that picture and look what they gave you. Identify next to what they gave you, whether that's an angle or a side congruency statement. And then look at the picture and see what else you can prove without any help. Write that off the side and determine if that's an angle or a side congruency statement. And then finally, for us to prove this, would it be by AAS? ASA, SSS, or SAS. Those are your four choices. So try that all by yourself. All right, so share with the person next to you and around you. Everybody talk to somebody. Make sure everybody's talking to somebody around you. You might have to talk to a couple people and see what you come up with. Mm -hmm. And it could be of congruent angles. We'll get to those also. But for right now, it's... Yeah. Yeah. these listen I didn't answer these questions here because essentially I answered them here. So this is an angle and an angle of congruency statement. Then the only thing that's left over is to prove that IJ is congruent to IJ because they share a side. And so that's by the reflective property. It will be of congruent segments. And then if you put your fingers on those angles that are congruent, that side is in between those two angles, so it's the included side. 
So it has to be ASA, not AAS. AAS would have been if it had been site KI or site KJ. That would have been a non-included site. All right, so let's look at number four. We're going to write a proof. You're going to have to write small. It's not a very long proof, and neither is the other one. So let's look to see what we got, and then I'll have you do the other proof all by yourself. So we have angle LOM is congruent to angle NPM. So LOM, if you follow with your fingers, is this one right here, and they have arc mark with a single arc mark. And NPM, N to P to M, is this one right here. So that's an angle congruency statement. And then side LM is congruent to side NM, and they've tick marked that for you. That's a side congruency statement. We need one piece of information that we can prove by ourselves without any extra information. What, what might that be? Ivan? So we have to name it because there's two angles with angle M. We have to name that properly, but those, what kind of angles are those? Vertical. And so angle LMO, LM, okay, let me try that again. Angle LMO is congruent to angle NMP. Are we okay with that? Why is vertical angles are congruent? And that gives us a side statement. Now, that does spell ass, A and it's ass. But, oh, I'm sorry, that's not a, no wonder. I can say it. You can't do that. Just swore I did. I swore <laughs> just like, <swore. laughs> <laughs> Angle congruency <laughs> statement. That was Yikes. professional. <laughs> I was just going to say, we're going to have to try something else because we can't prove it with that. All right, so it's um, either ASA or AAS. Here's your two angles. Put your fingers around your two angles. Is the tick mark side in between your two fingers? No. So it has to be by AAS, and I will always put that next to that proof statement to remind me of the progression of my proof. And so here we go. Okay. All right, so here's my statements and my reasons. What? It doesn't look very different, does it? No. Yeah, it is a different one. All right, so my first statement, I'm going to start with my one of my givens, and I want to do A first, so the only A in my given is this one. So step one, stop. Angle LOM is congruent to angle NPM, and that's given. So I can cross off my A, and I'm going to put an A to the left. Then I want another A, so I'm going to go directly to the statement we came up with. So step two, angle LMO is congruent to angle NMP. Why vertical angles are congruent. The reason why we have a concept talk is I was going to be it is a constant. And so that is A. All I have left is S, and S happens to be in our given, so that's going to be my third statement. Segment LM is congruent to segment NM. Y, given. You know, technically you don't have to split up the given, you can put it all together at once, but I'd like to teach you to go in that order of, in this case, AAS. And so I've hit my third thing. Once I hit my third thing, what's next? What's my fourth statement? The triangle congruent statement. Boom, we proved it. So triangle uh, LOM is congruent to triangle NPM. Why? 
AAS postulate. Done. Now you do your first proof all by your little self. You can do this. Do some pre proof planning. So figure out, um, and, and quite honestly, they haven't given you any direct congruent statements in the given, but they've given you ways to get to them. What do you know about right angles? Well, you don't want to go there, but they are 90 degrees. All right angles are congruent, so directly following this would be that angle B is congruent to angle D. Why? All right angles are congruent. What do you know about a, a bisector? AE bisects a side. So a line bisects a line. What does that give you? Two congruent segments. So this is going to give you an angle and a segment, and then you're left to something else. So it's going to take you two steps to get to each of these. You should have one step to get to the third thing, and then finally you should be able to reach your triangle. So do your proof planning. Show your proof with those around you. See how many steps they have. That's the steps you can have, like, all the given, the given, and then. 
Now, with this given, you want to split it up because you conclude different things with different parts of the given. I mean, technically, you wouldn't have to, but I teach it that you do need to split them up. Because if you can conclude different things from different parts of the given, I want you to split them up so that there's a logical progression of why you went from here to here. Because you're basically doing an if this then statement right below it. Okay, so we gave you um, those two, right? An angle and a side. Can you give them? They gave you the right angle. And they gave you the side because A includes the bisector, so A includes the thing that cuts this. This is something that you have in the overlap. Angle goes inside. Inside, inside, inside. So they've made that. Um, your postulate or postulate your proof you should have six steps you should have six well you should have split up your given so this is the first given right from this given there's not an angle congruency statement to that you have to conclude that angle B is congruent to angle D you must have that there. Yes. So do I have to write the first thing that the given first? Yes, the given must come first because essentially you're saying if this, then that. The first statement is your if, the second statement is your then part because you're saying if this is true, then this is true. And this is the reason why. Well, you were given that, and this is true because all right angles are. So the given should always come first before you ever conclude something. Not all givens do we conclude something from. And then this is a this <coughs> given right here must connect to that statement there. If AE is the now AE is the bisector, it's the cutter, it's the knife. What's being cut? BD. So if BD is the thing that's being cut, it got cut into two equal pieces, and here are the equal pieces. You had to tick mark those in the picture. And so my conclusion is, if I have a segment bisector, then I have two congruent segments. So I was given that I had a segment bisector. I know I have two congruent segments because a segment bisector creates two congruent segments. So those two have to go together. This is a straightforward angle congruent statement that you were able to determine on your own because you've got vertical angles here. You are not able to conclude anything else on here. You can't conclude that these sides are equal. Just because this is a segment bisector doesn't mean that it has equal pieces. I have no way of concluding that these two sides are congruent. I have no way of concluding that A, angle A and angle E are 
congruent because I'm not told that side BC or side BA and side ED are parallel. If they had told me that those are parallel lines, then these would be alternate interior angles. I could do that congruent. But they didn't, so I couldn't. So then you look at your picture, just look at one triangle. There's your two angles, right? So the two angles B and C, isn't that the name of side BC? Angle B and angle C, that's the name of side BC, so therefore it is the included side. And as a result, you're going to do your proof in the order of ASA. And so that's why my proof is in this order. I didn't start with this because I never start with a non-given. So these chunks have to go together. And then finally, your very last statement is your triangle congruent statement. So questions about how you did versus what I have up here. How did you do it, your first proof, other than having four statements instead of six? Okay. You didn't do the what? You didn't put that one in there? At all? You just totally left it out? So you didn't have it in your proof at all? Okay. Make sure that you follow. You had the right angles, but you didn't have that part in there? Yeah, I didn't do it. Did you have your given? Okay. Yeah, you, you have to start with that. I didn't do it. Yeah, you have to have the if part. So every part of the given has to be included in your proof. So they must have given it to you for a reason.